Hi, I'm Todd, and this is part one of a presentation on user interfaces I've designed, as well as some of my theories on UI. In part two, I'll also talk about some data visualization, as well as some video game UX or user experience, so be sure to check that out as well. So let's start with my history. First of all, I find I think about UI all the time. About once a week, I'll point out either bad UI or good UI to one of my friends. I'm currently contracting on a long-term project doing UI and software design for a private company here in Albuquerque. I used to work at a firm called Effective UI in Denver, which is probably where I first learned most of what I know concerning UI. That said, I was thinking about it, and I've actually been concerned with UI since way before that. I dealt a lot with UI in the physical sense as an industrial designer. I'd often make quick, cheap foam models of our product designs so we could see how they felt in our hands. We would see if it was comfortable, we would test if you could reach the buttons with just your thumb, and thus if the device could be used one-handed. Things like that. And even before that, I was concerned with UI. As a child, I recall having issues and thoughts on various video game UIs. So that's a bit of history. Now I'll talk about some of my processes, starting with information architecture. To me, the first stage of designing software starts with just trying to figure out the needs and executions. This means lots of whiteboard sessions and tons of sketching and ideation with the client. You need to become an expert in whatever this software does. Lots of back and forth. That means wireframes are basically blueprints and rough layouts of how the app works. Um, for me, this is the hardest part. You're kind of blind at first. Sometimes even the client isn't sure what the software needs to do at this point. Anyways, eventually, thanks to the wireframing process, the information architecture slowly gets more and more solidified. So next, I'd like to talk about UI efficiency and user experience. So not only should you be trying to figure out your information architecture, you need to find the best way to do it. And this is my favorite part. There are several ways to skin a cat, but some are more effective than others. So here's a recent example of what I'm talking about. My supervisor told me to add a print section to UI I was working on. She drew her idea up on a piece of paper. I've mocked that drawing up here in this wireframe. As you can see, she had three options. Print FNOL, which is the first notice of loss. Print forms and print FNOL and forms. When you select one of the last two options, you get a pop-up window with the list of forms to choose from. Then you print. Now this was legacy from her current software and probably why she suggested this. I looked at it and thought, well, first off, how about we take the radio buttons, which limit you to one choice, and change them to checkboxes. Now the user can select the first two options together, which means we can just drop the third. So then I went and talked to the actual end user. I learned that she hardly ever prints just an FNOL, and also that there is not a terrible amount of forms. So at that point, I changed this UI to something more like this. Now this is a much cleaner approach than the original idea. Both ideas ultimately did the same thing, but this is more clear, it's faster, it's easier to use, and it's probably easier to program. The user doesn't have to drill down. So to me, a good UI UX designer is considering this stuff always. You may have two UIs that do the same thing, but what is the better experience for the user? So now I'd like to discuss design and visual treatment. So you have your software wireframed. We know what it does, but what does it look like? How is it branded? What colors do we use? Depending on the client, you can spend a long time right here. So for example, here's a Herf Jones wireframe page. This software is for high school yearbook editing. You have your main nav in the upper left, tools and menus on the left, an inspector dock on the bottom, and a palette dock on the right. Now that we've seen the wireframe, I'll show you two different design directions that we looked at for it. The first is dark and slick, done by my friend Eddie. The second is fun and friendly, done by myself and my friend Nick. The idea here was to present two totally different directions. One was serious, one was fun. One was designed to target the client, the second to target the end users, which are primarily high school girls. So that's the concept of skinning. And I've done tons of different skins and treatments for wireframes. I think to best show this, I will first present eBay Desktop. This is an app version of eBay, not the website. The project lead from eBay asked me to do some reskins of the app to appeal to certain demographics that he provided. I was allowed to ignore their regular branding except for the logo. And here's what I came up with. This is called Venetian, and it is for antique collectors and grandmas. This is Black Gloss, and it's for young men interested in technology. This is G5, and it's for Mac enthusiasts. This is called Urban for the hip-hop heads. This is yogurt for the ladies, and there are several others, including two prototype skins. He wanted to see a Fuzzy Dice version, version called Fuzzy Wuzzy, and a World of Warcraft version. The Warcraft theme was hard at first, and I ended up making myself this breakdown sheet. Once I had this, I was able to deliver the concept pretty solidly, as you can see here. So now I'll just flip through some projects and UIs that I've skinned or helped design to sometimes. Here we have Adobe Notifier. This software here was for picking event photos you wanted to purchase from this company that photographed the event. This is one of my favorite designs. Notice the sweet trash can icon I built there. This is Neopets. It was the hot project at the time. I was brought in briefly to help flesh out some UI and game design. 
And this here is a more recent project. As you can see, this project is in more of the flat style design direction. Lastly, here's an old Quiznos payroll app I worked on. I chose this image because it's what we would call a metric guide. This is where I would call out all the pixel spacing to help programmers lay everything down nice and clean. Working closely with your programmers is also a huge part of UI design. At the moment, I live with one of my current programmers, so we collaborate all the time. Okay, so that concludes part one of my video on UI. In the second portion, I will talk about data biz, some video game UI and user experience, and some other things. So thank you for watching, especially if you are a prospective employer. And feel free to watch the second portion.